What's going on, everyone? This is Ishmael from Dad Is Not A Now, changing the narrative for men of color and fatherhood, but also changing the narrative about the things I care about. Uh, before we go into this new episode, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor for this episode, VT Heroes, and I'm going to let them take over. Hey, love. I think it's your turn to do the dishes tonight. No, it's your turn to do the dishes. How about we settle this? Fine by me. Whenever it matters and even more when you feel like it doesn't Protect you so you never feel like you wasn't Know I'm right alongside you Here but that I hum behind you But always got you End of discussion Nothing means more First one to offer his shoulders for what you preach for Thought I saw the eyes of the world Until I seen yours And know that I ain't see a better view yet I'm with whatever So don't ever you fret Know that you covered Not a hurdle or a heartbreak To change what a partake Cause none of them won't ever get comfortable in your walkway My job is to aware you Fully loaded, prepare you for all of the above that I'm never letting get near you But still in all, give you every advantage I found Couldn't find a better fit for them, along with my crown And since the baton was passed, I've been down Cause feeling's not an option, and dad is not a noun, not at all Welcome, welcome to another episode of Dad Is Now The Now. My name is Ishmael, changing the narrative for men of color and fatherhood, but also changing the narrative about the things I care about. And the thing I care about today is affirmation and representation. Uh, before I bring on my special, special guest, I want to bring in my co-host, my brother from another mother, Robert. What's going on, brother? How you doing, Ish? Thanks for having me again. It's blessed to be here. Oh, don't be shy. Come on. Tell the people who you are. I know people already know you, but like new people. Tell them who you are. Uh, all right. While we're here, I'd like to say a father one to an amazing son. And on my platform on Instagram is called The Life of Chase Elijah. And what I do is I just highlight his life of all the things that he's been going through from birth till now that he's actually eight years old. Um, he had multiple heart surgeries, um, which is called Take Charge of Jeff Lowe. And we just bring awareness to his condition, but not only his, other people in the world from Down syndrome to Williams syndrome to 22Q to all type of things. And just shine a little bit of light and bring a little bit of awareness because, you know, I always tell people, like, no matter what you're going through in life, you're never in a fight alone. It's always a community out there that can support you and help you in your time of need. So these are the things that, you know, we do on our platform is bring a little bit more awareness and light to people's situations. Nice, nice. And I have the returning champion back onto the show again. I have the one and only Miss Brownstone, just a phenomenal, phenomenal human being, awesome storyteller. And she's back with us to tell us another African story. But I'm going to let her introduce herself. Ms. Brownstone, introduce yourself to the people again. Well, um, my name is actually Amobola Imoisili, but I write under the name Simisaya Brownstone. Don't ask me why I picked this name. <laughs> Sound like an R&B singer's name. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my alter ego. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I write under the name Simisaya Brownstone. Uh, I've written a few children's books. I own a company that is all about representation. That's like at the core of everything that we do. Um, uh, representation in every in, in everything, right? So we have a lot of products for kids, um, but you know, a lot of the representation we see maybe with dolls or books and things like that, but we need to kind of expand that because you know, it goes beyond that as well. So I have a company that does STEM toys and 
other products that also represent our kids. And then I do a class uh, on African folktales where kids come and learn about African history and culture and hear stories. So it's a fun time. Sometimes we do crafts. Sometimes it's just a story. So it's just a fun time for the kids. Nice. Nice. And so the floor is yours. Take over. <laughs> so you just want me to jump into the story. Jump in. Yes. <laughs> all right okay here goes my story so first of all i'm sure everybody knows that bats are nocturnal right and so this story is going to explain to you why black bats are nocturnal a lot of african folk tales explain why things are the way they are so whether it's why the leopard has his stri spots or the, the tortoise has a curved shell whatever it may be there's a story there. Um, and there are many stories about how things came to be in African folktales. So today's story is the story about um, why bats are nocturnal. So before I start my stories, I always start my stories the same way. Um, I am from Nigeria. And anytime we tell a story, the storyteller starts by saying, story, story. And then you say, story. Story. <laughs> uh, Robert, you can to, you unmute yourself? So it's not story, it's story. <laughs> story. I was worried because he unmuted, he muted himself. So he has to say it too. <laughs> you have to mute okay, it. Okay. <laughs> and then I say once upon a time, and then you say time, time. Okay, so are we ready? Ready. Yes. Story, story. Story, story. <laughs> you already got it wrong. <laughs> oh, I got an F. <laughs> <laughs> we got to make it long. Story. Story. Yes, that's it. Okay, gotcha. here we go. Story, story. Story. Awesome. Once upon a time. 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 <laughs> awesome. You know, when we do it, you know, if you do it often enough, it just comes naturally. <laughs> All right. Okay. So once upon a time, the bat and the rat were cousins. You know, some people say bats are like rats of the sky. They kind of look a little bit like, you know, rats with wings on them. So they were cousins, okay? And they would play all day. They would have a good time every, every day. And they were living a happy life as cousins. Meanwhile, the rats and the falcons were at war. Okay, so I like to exaggerate when I tell my stories. War! <laughs> they were at war, okay? And they were fighting and fighting and fighting. And it came down to the final battle. They were going to decide who was going to be the one to win this final battle, okay? So on the first day of battle, the falcon came flying in and it flapped its wings, landed on a tree, and it called out to the rats and said, rats, are you ready for a battle? And the rats said, yes. And the bats and the rats began. No, I'm saying the bats and the rats, the bats and the falcons. I'm mixing up my animals. The bats and the falcon, they began to fight and they fought 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 for so long. But ultimately, the falcons won. Okay. So the falcons won and the bats, they were so sad. It was defeat and nobody wants to lose a battle. So they were so sad. They were crying. But did they give up? No. They did not give up. The rats sharpened their claws and they got ready for the second day of battle. Okay. And so the falcons came back, flapping their wings, ready for battle. They landed on the tree and they called out and they said, rats, are you ready for battle? And the rats said, yes. And once again, the rats and the falcon, they began to fight. And they fought 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 and they fought. And they, fought. they fought for a long time. And once again, the falcons won 
the war, the battle, and it was so sad and they were so sad and they did not know what to do. And so when you're fighting a battle, sometimes you need to get reinforcements, okay? So the rats thought to themselves, hmm, the bat is our cousin. The bat has wings, so maybe the bat should come help us to fight this war. Because the falcon has wings, the bat has wings, maybe that advantage will help us out a little bit in this war. We need somebody in the sky doing something because this falcon is just all over the place attacking us from all angles. And so they went to their cousin, the bat, and the bat was happy to help them fight this war. And so on the third day of battle, the rats and the bats got together and the falcon came flapping its wings, landed on a tree, and it said to them, bats, rats, are you ready for battle? And the rats and the bat said, And they all began to fight and they fought and they fought and they fought and they fought and they fought. And, they fought. and still, even with the bat's help, they lost the battle again. This falcon was just way too powerful for them. And so they lost and lost and lost. And so the bat thought to itself, hmm. This is not looking good for us. This this falcon is not, we're, we're not beating this falcon. So there's there's no point fighting against the falcon. And, and I want to be on the winning team. So the falcon, the bat said, I'm going to now side with the falcon. I'm going to leave my cousins, the bat, behind. And I'm going to fight now with the falcons because the falcon is the winner. And the falcon, I want to be, I want to be a winner. Who doesn't want to be a winner? So he left his cousin the rats and he went to fight with the falcon i hope i'm getting the right bats and the rats as i'm going through this story because i feel like I'm, they they rhyme <laughs> so but i hope you're following along anyways so the bat went to side with the falcon and on the next day of battle the falcon came flapping its wings along with the bat by its side and the falcon said rats are you ready for a battle? And the rats said, yes! And they fought and they fought and they fought and they fought and they fought. And of course, they lost the battle. And the bat was happy that he was on the winning team. And so after they fought this battle, the bat went to his friends, the falcon, and said, Falcons, now we've won the war. Let's go have fun. Let's go play. Let's go do, do the things I would do with my cousins, the, the, the rats. And the falcon said, uh, nope. You betrayed your cousins. You are a traitor. We cannot have a traitor in our midst. We don't like that. So even though you fought for us, we do not like that you are a traitor. And they started to call the bat a traitor. And they said, traitor, 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 traitor. And the bat was so ashamed. He covered his face. He was so ashamed because he was being called a traitor. He didn't want to be called a traitor. And so he decided, okay, let me go back to my cousins, the rats, and see if they will play with me now because I don't want to be called a traitor and the falcons don't want anything to do with me. So the bat went back to its cousin. The bat went back to his cousin, the rat. And the rat said, nope. You betrayed us in our time of need. When we needed you the most, you betrayed us. And so we cannot have you back. We want nothing to do with you. And they called the bat a traitor. And they said, traitor, 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 traitor. And the bat was so ashamed because everybody was calling it a traitor. The rats were calling it a traitor. The falcon was calling it a traitor. Everybody was calling it a traitor. And he did just not, he just did not want to be called it. He was just so ashamed. And so from that day forward, the bat decided he would never come out at night at daytime again. He would never come out at daytime so that nobody would be awake to call him a traitor. And so from that day forward, the bat would stay in the dark, stay only come out in the nighttime when the falcon and the rats were not there to call it a traitor. And that is why still today, bats are nocturnal. And that is how our story ends.
It was an amazing story. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> you really got me confused with the bats and the rats. I pro <laughs> As I was going, I was like, did I say bats or did I say rats there? But, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. the two words rhyme. So I sometimes I get those mixed up. But the rats were the ones that lost. And the bats with the wings. So I hope it kind of all made sense in the end. No, it definitely <laughs> did. The rest and everyone. I feel bad. <laughs> That's a shame, man. That's a really a shame. I know, you know, but if you think about it in real life, falcon, the falcons eat rats, right? And so um, <laughs> they have no choice. They, 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 they were going to lose this battle. But it kind of reflects real life, right? So the falcons in real life will eat um will eat rats and i do believe that some birds do eat bats so it kind of like um goes along it is kind of like reflects real life in a way so that's kind of a, how a lot of those stories are it kind of reflects somebody's kind of just observing and then makes up this story and says oh well this is probably what happened and you know and things like that and so it's based on like how these animals behave or how somebody observed the animals to behave. But I'm just happy. I enjoyed it. I know Chance enjoyed it because he was so into it. It's just, <laughs> it's just amazing because these stories are so profound and, and, and just, just amazing. Yes, they are. They are. And I, like I said, I, I definitely enjoyed it. Cause like I said, I didn't look at it like why the, why the bet always come out at nighttime or whatever. You know, until he got called a traitor. So, <laughs> yeah, I, thought, I, thought, I thought you saw this in real life. That's what I was thinking in my mind. I was like, is, did, did she see this in real life or did she not? <laughs> is this like no. an actual story in real life? You know, it's funny you say that because a lot of times when I tell my stories, Somebody always asks me, is, is that true? And so I'm like, please don't go, you're telling your science teachers that <laughs> this is a true story. Because I'm like, this is not a true story. I, I, I think I told a story about why we have mountains and hills one day. And I told a story about, um, what was the other story I told? I don't remember what it was, but it was... What was Girls it? Was another why we have something. And the kid was like, is that true? Is that really why we, we have it? And she, I'm like, don't go tell your teacher. <laughs> Close this your ears someone's about to say. <laughs> <laughs> this is not scientist, scientific facts. This is yeah. so. But it, it's an amazing story with a principle at the end of it. You know, you get something, whether you're an adult, whether you're a kid, you get something from it. And I think that's the important things about the uh, like stories like that is that you can get something from it, you know, and that's the most important thing. And it's generational. It's something that you can share to the next generation. Um, Robert, do you want to say something? <laughs> oh, no, like, I, like one, I, I enjoyed it. I'm glad that my son, son did because, you know, he was like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, she might tell a story. Come on over here, you know, and check it on out or whatever and stuff. So I had to turn in the volume when you were like, are y'all ready to battle? He got really loud. He was like, oh. oh. <laughs> I really did it with you, though. Yeah. I really did it with you. I was like, you ready to battle? You know, it's funny you say that because when I do tell the when I do tell the kids the stories, I do wait for them to say it with me. So I like so today I just kind of just went through the story, but normally when I do the ready for battle, I'm like, okay, everybody say it with me. Ready for battle? <laughs> I'm feeling like you're a teacher now. <laughs> he is a teacher. <laughs> oh, this is like a teacher really thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's a teacher. I know she is a teacher. But, um, I know she's a teacher. but yeah, like, like, like Ishmael was saying, um, you know, you it's you use these stories, it's like life lessons and stuff like that. Like you said, like, you know, you got your cousins and you know how it always impaired to like you know, stick with your family and stuff like that no matter if you're winning or losing and stuff like that because you just never know when you know that time will arrive to where the tides will turn and stuff like that and i'm going to shift that to like last sunday you know, watching football and the buccaneers were playing against the um, new york jets and the jets they really don't got a good record and the buccaneers do, does 
and the Jeff just beat them all four quarters, and you just knew that the game was over. The next thing you know, the Buccaneers came back and won or whatever, and like the last few minutes and stuff like that. So again, you just never know when the times might turn and stuff like that. Y'all would think that you always want to be on the winning side, but you just never know who has to win side till the last person is standing and stuff like that. So and I'm, then I'm glad that you know, no matter what, you know, the rat just never gave up. He was ready, you know, put his grease on his face, you know, sharpen his nails, like, you know, <laughs> put his boxing gloves on. Like, I'm I'm going to fight every day going there, whatever, until I win. And after a while, you're like, you know what? I'm just tired, man. Today's not the day. <laughs> <laughs> I should have got popcorn for this story because this was good. <laughs> <laughs> And what and what I got from this is my favorite um, phrases now is "Are you ready to battle?" <laughs> you can't say it that way. You have to. Okay. Say it. <laughs> you got your hands like this and everything. <laughs> yes. So Robert, you have. So so Robert, so when Chance does homework, you have a new um, phrase now. Are you ready to battle? Oh, you ready for homework? <laughs> I, I don't know, man. You know, an issue, you know, you might win your battle because if you're walking up to me and I'm thinking I'm ready to fight, you like, are you ready to battle? I'm like, you know what? You're crazy. You got it. Like, I'm not trying to fight you. I'm not ready for battle. I'm coming at you like that. So. <laughs> but this, this was amazing. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. But before we end it, tell people how they can find you. Because you do this as a virtual class too, right? Talk about that first. Yeah, so I do this weekly. Yeah, I've been doing it every week for over a year now. <laughs> so I have a whole lot of stories, a story for each week of the year. So uh, you can find um, you can find all the information on my website at tennyandtayo.com. So T E N I A N D. T-A-Y-O, so tennyandtayo.com. And if you go on there, you'll find uh, a link to the African Stories class. And I do like different classes. So every week I do a different uh, story. So and sometimes and then the classes are not just the story. We actually learn a little bit uh, uh, about African culture and history. So whether we talk about the country, so like um, this week we were talking about Djibouti, right? Mm -hmm. And so we talked, you know, we talked about where the country is, a, a few fa interesting facts about the country, um, different like the currency, the 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 language, the people, the culture, so, uh, just a few things before we then start the story. So and then we start the story, and so we kind of just hop all hop all over the continent. Uh, talking about different stories. Sometimes we talk about the country the story is from. Sometimes I might talk about, you know, other things. Maybe if the story is about a wedding, we might talk about, you know, African weddings. Or if the story is about a drum, we might talk about African drums. Or So it just depends. And then, um, yeah, so it's it's once a week. And, um, yeah, you can join. And then I'm also, I also do, uh, this is not every week, but I do it, you know, periodically where we do the class, but we end it with a craft mm -hmm. at the end of it. So we'll do, uh, you know, the, the story, we'll do the, you know, the intro to Africa, the story, and then we'll do a little craft. So depending on what the story is, we might do a craft. So maybe like in this, for this story, we might make a bat. Or, you know, if we're talking about a queen, we might make a crown or, you know, different things. So, um, but a craft related to the story that we just talked about. That is amazing. All that amazing stuff is going to be in the link um, below, description below. And I think I found you a new student, Chance, right? You're going to sign them up today, right? You said once a week, but, you know, like it's like Mondays, Tuesdays or... So right now, my weekly classes happen on Wednesdays and Fridays. So uh, there's an 11, 11 a.m. California time and 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. So those are the, the t class times. So it's usually for people, you know, like um, after school kind of stuff. And then I have the, the there's one, the one with the craft is starting in about three weeks, but that's on Sunday mornings. So, so it kind of just varies 
Um, so I have different time, but the the re the reoccurring like regular one is Wednesdays and Fridays, and then I pop in some other ones maybe on you know uh, a Sunday or a Saturday depending on on what it may be. But those those schedules change. And uh, in a few weeks, I'm starting a series on African queens, wow. and so we're gonna do the same thing, but then we're going to learn the story is going to be about you know a queen, a, like a real queen that lived you know. Uh, hundreds of years ago, in some cases. So, that is and, amazing. And my, and my next question is: uh, Were you always like that animated? You know, when you tell stories, or was that something like Candy B? Because when I tell my son a story, I be reading him a book. It's just how I read it. Like, yeah, Jack, <laughs> went up, Jack went up the hill and came back down. But you know, like I don't add that into it. I be I be trying sometimes because even my friends call me well, out on I would say that that probably came from growing up in Nigeria. So like I, I I went to boarding school, for example. So first of all, a lot of stories, people just sit and you and so I feel like Nigerians are just very dram very dramatic about everything, right? So it's just like extra. Um, so that's probably what it was. And then um when I was in boarding school, um, there were times when we just didn't have anything to do. And so we didn't have any electricity. We didn't, we, we were just like, there was nothing. There was like literally darkness and just a whole bunch of girls with nothing to do. And so um, what would happen is we would all gather and then one person would tell everybody a story. And they would tell this person a story about a movie they watched. I remember vividly, I watched the movie it's, just, it's an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, um, but I watched it. Well, I watch it because a friend told us the story, and so everybody would gather and be like, "What movie have What movie have somebody watched, but most people have not watched?" And so that person will tell the story, and the way they would tell the story, like they would, like they would give sound effects, like he came and he shot the gun. <laughs> And he fell down the stairs. Da, 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 da. And, like, and she sh and she slapped him, and she was like, Shh. you know, and like so much drama in the storytelling. So that was just kind of <laughs> how I grew up telling stories. Like you always add the sound effects. Even my husband today, he's like, he's like, what what was that sound effect that you just added to that story? I'm like, and I just fell down. Gah. You know, I'll just add. <laughs> Add the sound effect. So I think that's just kind of how I just grew up. It was just extra, like dramatic with the storytelling. And even like when we would do like, um, you know, school plays, for example, we would do school plays where nobody would say a word, right? But you would get the 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 the, the story because they'd be like. Like every every moment, like you would, like they would, you know, they would use their bodies to tell the story, and just with music, and you would get like the whole story, but nobody said a word. So um, I think that's kind of just where it is, like that extra drama. <laughs> I need to I need to work on that. I need to work on that. I've been trying to get better at it, but nah, I'm not. I just read it how I read it. <laughs> but I need to add a little bit of flavor to it. Makes it get my Nigerian into it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's definitely a gift. You definitely have a gift. Thank you for sharing it, sharing it with the world. I appreciate you. And before we end, I think uh Chance have a question or he wants to say something. You have your hand up. Yes. Um, <laughs> I um are you really into like stories? Yes. Okay, that's I my am. question. You look like it. Am I into stories? That was your question. Is yes, I'm into stories. I tell stories. I write books. So yes, even all my products that I sell have a little story inside the story. So there's stories everywhere. Yeah, he missed the introduction part. Yeah. <laughs> I would. I would assume he would have got it from the from the the story. <laughs> Right, right, right. From the rat, the bat, and the foul. Just like, let me just confirm. Let me clarify. confirm it. Yes. Is she a teacher, teacher, or is she a teacher? Right, you know. <laughs> but she. Let is, me get. Um... You... <laughs> but again, 
thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. We definitely got to do this again one day. I would definitely have you back on to talk about the Queens because I think that's important. I think I would love to hear one of those stories. And I think Chance would love to hear that story too, Robert too, because um, I think it's, it's important and I think it's, it's, it's phenomenal what you, what you do. Yeah, I think the, the Queens one, like that is one of the ones where the kids t tend to remember a lot. They're just like, oh, Princess so and so. I'm like, I might be remembering her name. Awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. But again, thank you again, Robert. Thank, thank you. you again. No Chance, problem. thank you for jumping on, man. I appreciate you, buddy. You're, You're my good. hero. Thank you, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. you. And we're out of here. Have a good night. Peace. Yeah, good Bye. Night. Bye. Bye. Bye.